Today we're going to be talking about seller financing with zero down. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I am James Wise. This is Holton Wise TV. And this is where I help you guys start, build, and grow your real estate portfolios. Now, today, we're talking about seller financing with zero down because my man Warren, guy in Colorado, wants to begin his investment journey. And Warren, you said you're interested in seller financing and you made it very clear that you have no money. <laughs> now, is it going to be possible for you to do a seller finance deal with no money down? Technically, yes. Is this like as replicable or as easy or as feasible of an investment strategy as people trying to sell you a course or a book or a program want to lead you to believe? No. No, it is not, brother. No, it is not. It's not like there is an aisle. It's not like I'm in Target, Target, and I go to the 0% down seller financing section, and there's just all these people with cool properties that make money, and they're like, sure, let's just give some fucking property to this dude halfway across the world. He doesn't have to put any money down. That's not logical. That makes no sense, right? Put yourself in their situation. Why the fuck would you do that? You wouldn't. Now, it doesn't mean seller financing doesn't happen. Doesn't mean you can't do deals with no money down. I've done both, right? But what you have to understand about me is there ain't nobody in the Cleveland market whose name's on more buildings than mine, right? Like, no investors out there in the Cleveland market are more well-known uh, in this space, right, than the Holton Wise Property Group, okay? So we have equity with the neighborhoods, right? They see our signs everywhere. They see our trucks. They see this. They see that, right? You know, we're a known entity, right? You're not a known entity. You're just a dude uh, in Colorado, right? You're a dude in Colorado, and you don't have any experience, right? So in my opinion... It's going to be like if you talk to like 100 people uh, and ask them if they will sell or finance a deal for you with no money down, I would guess 99 of them at least will tell you no, right? You're going to have to be marketing to sellers, talking to sellers all the time, right? Now, we do this show for you guys, right? And we find you guys properties. Um, wouldn't make sense for me to to do videos and charge, charge you per video uh, on every deal and talk to every seller to see if they would do seller finance for no money down because, I mean, again, you'd be paying me for 100 videos in the hopes that maybe you can get one, right? That doesn't mean there's no resources out there for you, right? I'm going to lead you to the proper resources, right? Resource number one, you go to holdenwise.com, okay? You go to holdenwise.com, brother, and then I want you to go to the property search for a sale tab, okay? Let's click this bad boy. All right, and then you got the MLS search and analysis show. That's where you're at. But what you really want to do is scroll down here to the bottom. Click here for MLS access, all right? And right up at the top, I got the seller finance feeds. Now, you had asked me. You said, hey, man, uh, I'm, I'm new. I'm just getting started. Should I be picky on the type of investments I do, or should I, you know, be open? Brother, beggars can't be choosers. You're trying to get seller financing with no money down, bro. There, there ain't going to be no scenario where you're the guy telling people no, okay? Right? Like, you're not really bringing much of anything to the table here. So you're probably going to have to take what you can get. Because, again, this is a big long shot for you, right? So what I recommend doing is getting all three of these. You have real-time MLS feed for seller financed single-family homes. You have another feed for seller financed multifamily properties, two to four units, and then lastly, we have one for apartment buildings, right? Each of these feeds is 50 bucks, 49.99. That's a one-time fee, okay, one-time fee. And what that's going to do, it's going to get you access, MLS access to any seller finance deal that gets put on the MLS the moment 
myself or any of the other brokers here in the Cleveland market get it, right? We, I don't know. We got like five or 7,000 uh, agents and brokers in our local MLS. The moment one of those deals hits the market, you're going to get an automatic email. And then it's going to allow you to have the contact info of the listing agent for that property. What I recommend you do is reach out to them directly, see what type of seller finance terms their clients are going to offer, right? Ultimately, you're looking to see if those folks will take no money down and finance you, right? If you can put together something where you find somebody who's, you know, able or willing to do those terms with you, I suggest you then at that point get it under contract contingent on my analysis and then shoot the deal to me and I will make you a video like this, right? If you don't want to do that, you can pay me uh, to, to reach out to all these sellers and do that. But again, I suspect 99 of them at least out of 100 are going to tell you no. So like you're just going to spend too much money. Wouldn't make sense, right? You're, it's very, you know, it's a very low probability scenario. So you got to do the groundwork yourself, I believe, uh, if you're going to be able to get this thing off the ground, right? So I would get all three of those feeds, right? But that's for the Cleveland market exclusively. In addition to that, what you could also do, and what you have to understand too, when you're doing seller financing and you're trying to get no money down, these deals are listed on the MLS by a broker. So let's just use some uh, basic numbers here. 100K house, right? If you want to sell or finance a 100K house, right, with no money down, cool. But don't forget, it was listed by a broker. What a broker's charge? About 7%, right? So that's seven grand that's got to come from somewhere, right? So now, not only do you have to find a seller who's willing to take no money down from a completely unknown dude across the country, they now need to actually pay seven grand at least out of pocket you got seven grand for the real estate agent and probably a couple more grand for closing costs and stuff right so now you have to convince a seller it's a good idea to pay seven to ten thousand dollars to let you own their property right so before it's already 99 out of 100 chance now it's probably uh you know a failure rate right now we're probably looking at a failure rate of you know one out of a thousand people are going to be willing to do that right so another resource you can do if you so choose, uh, and not from the Cleveland market, this would be nationwide, check out PropStream, right? PropStream right here. We got the real estate data sign. In the show notes below, you can click them, sign up for your free trial. What that's going to allow you to do is build lists of motivated sellers. And this is nationwide, folks. This is nationwide. That's a monthly fee, though, right? You get a discount uh, by signing up through our link below, and you get a free seven-day trial. And that's uh, going to be nationwide, right? So the real-time MLS feeds, that was Cleveland-only, one-time fee. 50 bucks, so long as you log in once every two months, you're good forever, right? But those are all listed properties. Now you're looking at a nationwide set of data through PropStream, okay? But you got to pay monthly. But again, click our link, you get a discount, number one. Number two, you get a free seven-day trial. And you're building lists, okay? You're building lists of sellers, motivated sellers, right? You could be looking at people that just got divorced, people that just inherited the properties, all that type of stuff, right? You're trying to find motivated sellers, pre-foreclosure type people, right? Any type of list that you can think about building, right? You build this list of motivated sellers, you get their contact info, you get their mailing info, and you market to them, right? Because again, bro, a lot of people are going to tell you no, so you got to be moving, contacting them. But these people, right, number one, it's nationwide, so you're not just limited to Cleveland. Number two, these are properties not listed by a broker, so you don't have that hurdle of the seller having to come out of pocket and pay the broker, pay the closing costs because you're not bringing any money to the table, right? Those are the two reasonable nuts-to-bolts avenues for you to try to begin some type of seller-financed business, right? I know that wasn't as sexy as what everybody else says. Everybody else says, yeah, man, you can get into seller finance deals with no money down. Give me five grand. I'll tell you how it works, right? And then they'll probably explain the same type of strategy I just explained, but they don't, they don't let you know that like 999 out of 1,000 people are going to tell you no. Why not? What do they care? They already collected your money. They don't give a shit. They're moving on to the next sucker, right? Uh, so is it possible? Yeah, it's definitely possible, right? But it, you just have to understand the real hurdles. It's not... Again, it's not like I'm going to Target. I'm like, oh, no money down? No problem. Boom, here we go. Boop, 
No, dude, you're going to have to build a business, right? So you're either on the phone with all those Cleveland brokers and agents hammering away, getting told no 99% of the time, right, with my real-time MLS feeds, or you're building your own list, getting told no by sellers 99% of the time, right? But if you keep at it, it's a big numbers game. Eventually, right, eventually you're going to get a yes, and you're going to be able to do your seller finance deal, but before you close on the deal, kick it to me. I will do a show like this one for you. Now, if all that work, right, it's too much of a log shot for you, you don't feel uh, that that makes sense, right, now that we have a realistic expectation of what zero money down seller financing is, if that is too much for you, I'm going to show you what you can do with a very modest budget, right? Because we have properties incredibly cheap in the Cleveland market, and if you can get financed uh, and bring a down payment to the table, right, you could do deals for less than 10K, right? So if you save up 10K and you want to see what a deal like that will look like, stick around after this commercial break because I'm going to break down the numbers for you. Hey lenders, would you like to be part of our referral network? Send us an email at sales at holtonwise.com. Welcome back. Let's pull up the property, man. Let's get into the details here, right? We'll be able to do this deal for less than $10,000 out of your pocket. 2703 Denver Ave, Lorraine, Ohio, 44055. It's been on the market about six weeks. Price super cheap, man. 39900 right? 39900 okay? You bring one-fourth of the pie to the table. The bank is going to bring the rest, right? The bank going to bring three-fourths of the pie. Now, this property is priced so cheap, okay, because it's got a tenant in there, and the landlord doesn't understand what they're doing. At least that's what it appears like to me, right? We only have one photo. We don't have other photos, but that's okay. It's very common for landlords and tenants to not get along, and it's hard to get a lot of photos of the inside. We don't really care what the inside looks like, though, right? Because here's the deal. You have a month-to-month -month tenant in this property on an oral lease paying $550 a month. This is a $1,000 a month rental, okay? So let me read between the lines for you folks. If there's a property that's supposed to rent for this, and some dude has been renting it to a tenant on an oral month-to-month -month lease for half of that, guess what? When that tenant eventually moves out, you're probably going to have to fucking refresh that unit. It's not going to look amazing. Put that in your brain, okay? But that is what's going to allow us to pick it up for a stupid price. They listed at $39.9 under normal circumstances. If it was renting for $1,000 a month like it should, it would have flown off the shelves, right? But it hasn't because of that five fifty, right? There's two kinds of people that could buy this property. People that want to live in it, well, guess what? They're not interested because there's a tenant in there. Or people that want cash flow. Well, guess what? Those people are passing it by because we got no lease and the tenant's only paying five fifty. That's going to provide us opportunity, right? I think we could even chop a couple bucks off of that because I just think the the buyer base is small, right? So I want to try to pick it up at thirty seven. If you are able to get that tenant up to the thousand bucks where they should be, you'd be looking at an NOI of like six grand a year. You'd be spending an average of fifty nine hundred. And with you only putting down 25% of this investment, you're under 10K, bank puts in 27 and a half. That's like a 50% return, right? A 17 cap. Now, let's look at reality, though. Is it, like, realistic that you could buy this at 37? Yeah. Is it realistic that once you become the landlord, you say, hey, Mr. Tenant, we're going to put you on a lease? Yeah. Is it realistic you're like, hey, Mr. Tenant, you've been paying five fifty. We're going to put you on a lease, and now your rent's basically doubled. It's a thousand because that's what everybody else that's probably going to want to live in a house like this going to pay. And tenants like, yeah, no problem, dude. Probably not, right? It's probably not going to work. You're probably going to create yourself an artificial turnover. If that happens, you're probably going to then go in and spend like at least ten, fifteen k, getting it spruced up. Then we'll get you a brand new tenant, Section Eight tenant, paying thousand dollars a month, right? This is a neighborhood. Like a DC neighborhood, you definitely want to go Section 8, right? It's uh, really good, right? Limits your risks. That would probably be what happened if you tried to double that rent right away. What I like to do is I like to come in, hey, Mr. Tenant, you've been paying 550 you got no lease. 
We're going to put you on a 12-month lease. We'll keep it at 550, right? That way they don't get spooked. They don't get scared. They don't move out, right? They're dealing with somebody who's a mom pop, has like no clue how to really run this business. Now they get a big corporate company coming in, right? What you really want is to create a paper trail, right? At the very least, when you try to evict a tenant, when you buy a property and there's no paper trail, on the first month, they usually argue the case to the judge that they didn't know the property sold, they didn't know who to pay. And at the very least, the judge continues the case. Do they ever really win this? No. Eventually, we get them out. But your simple like $750 eviction might turn into like a three or $4,000 eviction. So what we like to do, we like to go in, convince the tenant to voluntarily sign a lease. We do so by giving them the nice carrot of not increasing their rent. Now you got Mr. Tenant on a lease. If they don't pay, boom, much easier to evict. You ride that out for 12 months then after 12 months we start going up slowly right let's do a hundred then another hundred then another hundred we try to work this person as close to that thousand as we can get them before they eventually move out if we get them up to a thousand great the numbers i gave you that'd be your return that's insane if they eventually move out no problem you spend about 10 15k most likely obviously that's going to vary based on the condition of the unit uh but it's never going to be zero because i guarantee you you're going to have to do a lot more and just sweep up right so uh, if they move out, when they eventually move out, at least we got to collect all that rent, right? And then they move out, we do the turn, we put a Section 8 tenant in, the numbers speak for themselves. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.